I must be traveling through time again. Tlatlaukli Wankawi. As I channel and connect to inject through the consciousness of my past seven lives I see the blue indigo fusion that was made by the light beams and the mind gods that were traveling through time Check now we lords, I'm a glamatime Incinerating your mind, body and your soul The emotional cleansing of the inner spirit From the death grip of draconian control Ship shifting reptilian This medicine man can see clear through the smoke Infected all the masses by hop signal mind control And those still don't even know about the objective they had way before The 120 Six thousand year war, way out and out of space. Another time, another space. Orion's wars before the god city is here. As guardians of this earth, our sacred place. Somos nativos mexica and cloque and aguaque. Despertando tu alma de luz en este mensaje. Sagrado destino de cada día, el sagrado pasaje. Somos nativos mexica and cloque and aguaque. Despertando tu alma de luz en este mensaje. Sagrado destino de cada día, el sagrado pasaje. Our spirits reincarnate. Multiple lifetimes of codices they in the decay. Still not too late. late. Aligning yourself with the ancient Donali Mouth, the record of the past. Sing of the, the days, days of the sun. sun. I'm the indigenous one you, you haven't, haven't heard from. Torteca Tesca Ocelo. From Cali Cuaune Ocelo. Nativos ni Cantlaca. Alma tras alma, pero esto no para las cosas eternas que son del yeah. alma. Yeah. With that ancient medicine, What? most can't comprehend. can't comprehend. Defining the objective of, of these reptilian high breaded men. Awakening your consciousness through your pineal gland once again. Are you listening? I hope you're listening. Somos nativos mexica en cloque en aguaque. Despertando tu alma de luz en este mensaje. Sagrado destino de cada día, el sagrado pasaje. Somos nativos mexica en cloque en aguaque. Despertando tu alma de luz en este mensaje. Sagrado destino de cada día, el sagrado pasaje. Our spirits reincarnate. Multiple lifetimes, the codices, they indicate. Still not too late. Aligning yourself with the passing of the record of time. Sheep it the big. Get salqua. Descalipocla. Quetzio Mother Madetonansin. Celestrales. Universo. Who? Nub Ku www.ughuskyradio.com Broadcasting live from the east side of Los Angeles. Go ahead and have a seat, man. Go ahead and have a seat, fellas. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah Go ahead and introduce yeah. yourselves. Who we got up in the spot? What's up, man? My name is Nico. We're from the Mashika Warriors. We right here chilling with the OG Tic Tac. Yeah, yeah. What's up? I'm OG Tic Tac. Wow. What was the name of that track we just heard? That track is called Space and Time. Yep. It's from our up and coming album called Seven Lifetimes of Consciousness, my brother. What are the seven lifetimes? Well, seven lifetimes are through the through the codices in our traditional way of life. They say we we, we rebirth. So the seven lifetimes is the rebirth of seven lifetimes that have been here on this planet. What what were, were the um when the life end was that a spiritual thing or is that a physical uh it's definitely spiritual brother it's a spiritual experience is it experience or um it, it's consciousness okay it, our codices teach us how many lifetimes we've been here um the name of the group is the mashika warriors how long have you guys been together as a group as a group i would say uh about two years now yeah working on everything together from the production on up. You were telling me a story off the air um, because I was asking you about the, the project, when it's gonna drop, and uh, you kind of got a push. Where did that push come from? Um, I, I don't understand, like... You know, you, you were making music. Right, right, right. And then someone booked you for a show. Oh, yeah, 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 you're talking about oh, that yeah. push. <laughs> Actually, that push um, was from a, a friend and, and a good friend of mine named Hector. He's from a clothing store, an underground clothing store called GCS. Yeah. So that brother, he's been knowing about me doing music and, and me being around music, but never getting my project out. Um, and when he finally heard that I was in the studio working on music, 
you know out of the blues he just called me we had just been so hyped because oh, yeah. we finished two tracks just got two songs on literally you know he literally it, it you like know the next day or something bought the machine up. and started working off of the oh, machine yeah, bro you know what we i mean grinded. Like, we got everything man hooked up the whole studio so, so two tracks in you get a call two tracks in we get a call we're all pumped up and this brother just tells me hey tick um you know we're gonna have this little open mic over here at gcs yeah, yeah, like nonchalant you know and so yeah it was real nonchalant you know so I, I i thought you know okay it's like i was thinking maybe you guys could come up and do your music and stuff i know by now you got to have something yeah so, which i did i said you know what as a matter of fact we just finished these two tracks you know but i wasn't gonna actually come out yet brother so and he was like no no don't even worry about it man it's all good come on i want to hear it it'll be perfect you know it's just gonna be a little open mic so that's what he told me but it, about a day later i get this flyer yeah with all yeah. these other artists on there and we're up there and i'm like oh my god really bro like he went there he really you know, and, and I thank him for it. I ain't even tripping yeah, at all whatsoever. But, but what is the holdup with the music, man? What's taking so long? Well, for me, brother, is fusing the traditional sound with with the hip hop, you know, the boom bop beats, you know what I mean? And so it's taken me just a long time to do that because I haven't been able to work with somebody on a spiritual level because yeah. I am this indigenous person. And I'm coming forward with you know, our traditional uh, uh, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that actually come from the codices and yeah. the teachings of the elders that I've been around. Um, and then people, me, people don't understand, too, you also have permission, too. Right, most definitely. You know, that's yeah. another thing. A lot of the elders, you know, they, they ain't too cool with our hip, hip style of life that we have out yeah. here in the streets, brother. So, you know, in, in, in a sense... Uh, it's, did did hip hop did uh hi, would you say or uh, put this question out there did hip hop come from colonialism then I wouldn't say that hip hop came colonial from colonialism like direct okay because hip hop is a scream of the of the people the the, the, what, what I see is the scream of the people and the pain of the people how they express themselves of what's really going on in our inner cities a young Chicano right now, man. Where, where can they learn this history? Besides, by by, because we're waiting on your album. Obviously, if we pick up the album. We'll, we'll <laughs> cop a lot of so a lot of history nice. and a lot of teachings. But right Most now, definitely. what's where could they go right now? What? Um, I mean, the, the the best thing to do is is uh, look at the the circles of danza out yeah. there that are around. In each circle of danza that's out here, um, there will be somebody that will know about the true history of our people. Yeah. Um, they have the codices, the real codices, you know, and the real meanings behind them. So that will never change. You know, that's on stone. So once you start learning uh, your language and start learning also the symbolism behind your language, including along with the spirituality, it opens up a whole different world for yourself. What, what age were you when you when uh, when because uh, then your introduction was through Danza, obviously, right? Right. Okay. Right. What age were you when you got that? I was like about five years young, in between five and seven years young, when I actually um, heard a Danza circle right here in Lincoln Heights. Yeah. At Lincoln Park, and um, the drum, the sound of the drum, actually is the reason why I took off from the sandbox where my mother and father had left me while they were smooching over there in the grass. <laughs> by the romantic lake right <laughs> you there You know what I'm saying? Park. By the romantic lake at <laughs> Lincoln Park. <laughs> with all the ducks and all that, you know? Yeah. So, you know, when, when I, I, I caught them off, I caught them a little off when they was, you know, doing the thing. So I I took off. I heard I heard this, this drum beat and I ended up taking off and following it and I got over closer to by the building area. And sure enough, I turned the corner and there was these brothers doing danza there, you know, they had the drums and the chachayotes on, all the feathers and oh my God, to me it was like being in a dream kind of and this experience dance of having and, it. Yeah, it was like a spiritual experience is what happened to me. So so then really. I, I ask you that, but then I ask you this, and then where would, where did the hip hop experience come in? Well, the hip hop actually for me, came in 
it, it goes all the way back to 1972. Hip hop didn't exist in 1972 per exactly. se, right? <laughs> exactly. Okay, exactly. so then you, you have to explain. <laughs> OG Husky Radio at Original Tic Tac at Brother Nico on Instagram for all these cats. But so yeah. what? Break it down. Well, this this is what ended up happening. I'm I'm actually before the word hip hop out here okay. in the West Coast. Okay, out here, what first started? What I what I know that first started here was an underground street culture, and this underground street culture came from all walks of life here in Los Angeles and the greater area. So. How I got introduced to it was at the age of six years young, I begged my mother to take me down to the 18th Street Arcade on Broadway yeah. so that I could play pinball. This is back before all these fancy games okay. and digital games, okay? <laughs> yeah, so, everybody kind of like pinball. <laughs> most people probably not, right now are hearing me, they're going, pinball? What's pinball? <laughs> Google, you know, but, but Yeah, Google it. <laughs> It'll be there. <laughs> that backs me up some right now. Google. <laughs> But yeah, um, and that's what happened. I, I ended up begging my mom to get down there. And as we were walking in, I was six years young. There was this man outside with red suspenders. He had he had a, 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 a mustard colored pants tucked into these white socks, these white socks with red stripes. He had he had Converse on and a big old Kangol hat twisted to the side. But I didn't know what he was. And as I was walking in, he. He looked at me and said, you's a dancer. I could tell you's a dancer. And, and that energy that that man, you know, that I got from him, that I received from him when he said that, I couldn't stop thinking about him. So by the time we get inside, I start playing pinball with this little kid. My mom starts talking to his mom. And then I had the great idea to give the kid my game and give him two more quarters and tell him not to tell my mom that I'm gonna go outside and go see something outside. Yeah. And so he agreed, I was like, cool, here you go. And I went out, I snuck out, and as I was going out, I started hearing this soul music. And when I started to hear this soul music, as I got to the music, this man was actually gathering a crowd outside and telling people, gather around, gather around, the show's about to start. And when he turned around and seen this little Mexican kid looking at him, he pulled me in, he goes, there you are, my man. I told you he was a dancer. And I was telling him, sir, I'm not a dancer. I don't even know how to dance. I don't know what you're talking about. He'll show you do. Do you know how to point to the right? Yeah. Can you put your hand down and then point the other hand to the left? Yeah. And then back to the right, left, and then what I want you to do is throw your hands back like in, in, in a roller coaster. Like when you go yeah. in a roller coaster, throw it back, but you're gonna bring them down, and on the fourth one, you're gonna lock it. And I said, I could do that. I, I go, you mean like this? And I did it, he goes, all right, all right, all right. Now we gotta save that. You know what I mean? You can't do it now. Yeah, I, I, wait a minute, little man, until I give you the, the signal, okay? So then he turned around and said, all right, everybody, show's about to start. He presses the, the music, and all of a sudden, this soul music comes out, and this man just busts into all these locking moves, which I didn't know was a, this dance. Yeah. So to me, he was doing some magical stuff. Okay. I just seen him do like he turned into a robot. You know, yeah. <laughs> he started doing all these fancy moves, and he pulls me in, and we do the one, the two, roller three, coaster. four, one, two, <laughs> the bam, roller coaster, lock it. And oh my God, everybody went crazy. Started throwing money at us. Who was who was that man for those people out there? <laughs> well, for everybody that ain't knowing who that man is, and that's everybody, <laughs> <laughs> is is uh, Freddie rerun Stubbs from the program What's Happening in the Seventies. A, a lot of people don't understand that is that um, prior to hip hop, before it was labeled out here, um, you you labeled it perfectly an underground street culture is what we had out here exactly um, popping locking pop locking and I, I when i started as a kid i remember i remember out here was like pacific funk was the al Torino crew out in this right area. right okay. and they were pop lockers so then as it started getting archived i guess because of the internet Pop lockers wasn't a term. Poppers, it's either popper. And I never understood it because that's when they started making it political, right? Yeah, but right. but not, not understanding. But I had the concept <laughs> and the memory that like no. And then part of being able to do this is to like bring people in like you, wow. because let people know like right wh where you grew up, what areas you grew up in, so that right. You know, and and, and like I was telling you too, I'm, I'm a native from El Sereno. Yeah. You know, I, I came from Al Sereno and then moved over to Lincoln Heights 
And then from Lincoln Heights back in 78, I shout out to Baldwin Park in San Gabriel Valley. You know? Well, let them know who we're talking about. Let, give them your contact. Let them know, you guys. Go both of you. Yeah. Well, um, I'm OG Tic Tac. You know, you can find me on original Tic Tac on IG. And if you get on that Facebook still, because it seems like it's pretty lonely down there lately. <laughs> I'm just saying, um, I, I'm at uh, Tolteca Tesca Ocelo, which is my indigenous name, and then Tic Tac. So you can find me there. We also have a like page called Original Tic Tac, also on Facebook. And um, we also have T-Square Cultural Art where, where we set up our booth and most of the underground events and events we go to. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. This is Nico, N I C O. You can find me at Brother Nico, just at Brother, spelled out N I C O, all one word on Instagram. Lots of photos on there, cool stuff from our shows. And you can also find me on Facebook at Nico Old Soul, one word. 